we are aware of three dimensions of existence, height, width, and length. But do those three dimensions entail all of our being? Let's try to understand the concepts around dimensional perceptions. In a one-dimensional universe, only two directions are available, forward and backward. If we were to exist in this state, we could only move in one of two directions. Now, imagine existing in two dimensions. All we would be aware of is length and width. Our perceptions would be accustomed to receiving information in that format. Our world would be built in two dimensions as is defined by our limited perceptions. Our homes, our family and friends, all would be flat like the ink on a photo. When we looked around, we would look left and right, but there would be no up and down to look at. Now imagine a three-dimensional wind blowing over the two-dimensional plane. Perhaps the ramifications of this wind could be seen as it blows things around, but what if it picked up your home, carried it through the third dimension, and dropped it elsewhere in the two-dimensional plane of existence? To all those around you, it would apparently disappear and reappear in a different spot. Now imagine a ball passing through the three dimensions and falling through the two-dimensional world. At first, it would appear as a small circle as the leading part of the ball hit the surface of the two-dimensional plane, and it would suddenly grow into a larger one, appearing as an explosion of roundness, and then disappearing just as quickly. To the inhabitants of the two-dimensional plane, the ball is gone, but in the three-dimensional universe, it is still there. Now take this concept into the third dimension. If a four-dimensional ball were to fall through the third-dimensional universe, what would it look like? An explosion like the ball appeared to be in a two-dimensional universe? Perhaps. If it did manifest as an explosion of fire, for example, then that fireball is in existence somewhere else in the four-dimensional universe, in a constant state of combustion and at different stages of combustion, because, after all, what is the determining factor of which stage is represented? They would all have to be there. This brings into play several questions regarding the nature of time. We see time from a linear or one-dimensional point of view. Monday leads to Tuesday and Tuesday leads to Wednesday. However, if the fireball exists in several stages in time, yet is the same fireball, how can it exist side by side with itself? Well, one answer is that time is not as linear as we perceive it. So is time then the next dimension? If so, how does it interact with us in the three dimensions? In what manner is it beyond our perceptions? What about aspects of humanity such as thought and emotion? Are they the balls falling through dimensional barriers? Like explosions, they too seem to have moments of strength preceded and followed by weaker moments. Do we attract these aspects to us? If so, what else can we attract to us? The more questions these theories produce, the further we delve into the concepts presented. They open up whole new avenues of thought and chances for personal development. By making this video, I hope to present a few ideas to others who may be presented with these concepts for the first time and, consequently, encourage a few more ideas to come forward. Thanks for watching.